also talk about skincare, and we're going to talk a little bit about the mind-body detox. We don't often think about thoughts being toxic or kind of our emotions being toxic, but they've done studies to show that when you're thinking toxic thoughts, there's physiological changes in the body. So we need to be, you know, happy and healthy and positive and try and get a handle on that monkey brain that some of us, including myself, has. Um, okay, so let's let's jump right in. Reasons to cleanse the body. So, I mean, we talked about this and touched on this a little bit already, but essentially we want to enhance those channels of elimination because we have all these organs, and I'm going to go through them and, and talk about each and every organ, but we need to make sure that when we're starting to eat all this healthy food and we're starting to take these detox teas and all these types of things, that those toxins that we've ingested and that we're storing in our body, we store the toxins in our fat tissue, have actually somewhere to go. So we need to open the doors of elimination. And we do that by supporting these organs that we're going to talk about. So we all, so we want to enhance those doors, of, open those doors of elimination. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. We also want to support the digestive system. So you guys, if you're regulars here, which I think a lot of you are, which is so lovely, um, it's really important, and you probably already know this, to have a strong, healthy digestive system. Because this, the strong, healthy digestive system is actually the foundation of our health. If you think about it, what we eat, all those nutrients that we pull out of food, all those vitamins, all those minerals, all those cofactors, all those enzymes, all those things that we need to thrive and glow, we actually need to be able to absorb through our gut. And we actually need to be able to assimilate those and use them within the body. We need to have a really strong, strong foundation in order to feel really, really healthy. We also need a strong digestive system because all the waste that's accumulating from the food we eat, we really need to get that out as quickly as possible. So having a quick transit time from the time that you eat something till the time that it leaves your body is really, really important. So when we do a detox or a cleanse or kind of take a few weeks to really reset our body, we're really paying love forward to our digestive system. So really, really important that our digestion is on point in order to sort of get the benefits of all healthy food and supplements we're taking. Um, strengthening our immune system is something, another reason why we want to actually do a cleanse or a detox. And interestingly, 70% of our immune system actually resides in our gut. So you guys probably hear a lot about probiotics and good bacteria and all of that kind of stuff. We really want to make sure that our digestive system is healthy so that we can actually have a strong, healthy immune system and we can ward off, you know, infections and disease and just, you know, feel our guts most of the time. Um, and then, of course, we want to do, do a detox or a cleanse or a reset just to give our bodies a break because most of us live busy, stressful lives. Most of us are probably living, you know, downtown, breathing in air. There's things, no matter how healthy we eat, we're still being faced with kind of this chemical soup every single day. And it all builds up to one big kind of, you know, toxic load, so to speak. And so we just need to, again, support the body to allow those toxins to be released naturally through those natural processes. Okay, so let's kind of go through this little questionnaire and maybe you can just do it in your head and you can sort of ask yourself do I need a spring cleanse like by a raise of hands I know I need one <laughs> who's with me <laughs> okay so lots of us right like winter's long we're starting to feel like you know the summer's coming it's sunny out like we want to be outside and you know feel really energetic so if you feel bloated which many of us do that's a digestive system if you crave sugary foods, yeah, <laughs> um, have trouble losing weight, maybe you know you're trying really hard and you're doing all the right things, but when digestion is off and when you're holding on to excess toxins in the body, the body gets really sluggish, and we need to kind of re-kickstart the gears and get you know, that tune-up in order for the machine to work properly, in order for the for the body to lose weight. Low energy or brain fog. I think every single client of mine says that one of their goals, I ask them on their questionnaire, like, what are your three goals? And more energy is every single time. So more energy? Yeah, most of us, right? Like, why not? Um, and suffer from food sensitivities or allergies or sensitivities to smells. Really, really common. Maybe it's outdoor um, seasonal allergies, but maybe it's also food allergies. It's just food sensitivities. You're getting reactions from things like gluten or dairy or certain foods. So these are all reasons, if you answered kind of yes to two or more of these, 
I'd say you're probably a prime candidate for a, for a good one. So let's talk a little bit further about it. So spring, I mentioned this at the beginning, spring is a time when certain organs in our body actually start to work on themselves. So our body intuitively knows, our body are really, really smart machines, and they sort of support um, cleansing and detoxification naturally during different seasons. And especially if you look at like traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, there's a lot um, to that to sort of say that these different organs are needing to be supported with different types of foods and different types of modalities during different types of year. So right now, for spring, the liver and the gallbladder are what's up. So those are the two things that are sort of naturally detoxing. And what we actually, you know, what we're going to talk about today is really focusing on the liver. And the liver is really, really important because it's like this little machine that is responsible for taking care of all of our garbage and it works 24 seven and it purifies our blood and it actually gives us oxygen rich blood filled with nutrients. So if you can imagine your liver kind of like, um, or your body kind of like a, like a septic system or like a, a sewage system or something, if there's some sort of plumbing problem with the liver, things are just gonna get backed up. We're not gonna have constant circulation. We're not gonna have clean things come through. We're always gonna kind of be sluggish and toxic and never really feel that good. So we really need to kind of look at the underlying root problem and really support the liver as much as we possibly can. The gallbladder is also happening at this time of year. It's responsible for breaking down fats and, and making bile, which is also, you know, plays a role in fat breakdown. So, of course, we all know the benefits of spring cleansing or the benefits of cleansing, but these are just some of the things that you can feel and see a difference in, increased energy and vitality, your skin. So we'll talk a little bit about your skin today. Your skin is actually your biggest organ. Uh, it's an organ of elimination, and it's something that tells a lot about a person. So when somebody has different skin conditions, you know, psoriasis or dermatitis or eczema or acne or, um, you know, just all types of things, the first thing that I go to with them is to try and address what's going on at the gut level. Because when the gut is healthy, the skin is healthy. So it's really, really important. It's a big indication of what's going on on the gut side. Improved digestion, so that bloat, that kind of gas, that being able to kind of digest your food without worrying about what you're eating or where you are. Um, releasing stored toxins. So we actually store our toxins in our fat cells. And when we kind of go through this detoxification process, those toxins start to come out of our body. So we need to make sure that those doors are open so we can allow those things to come out. Um, of course, resetting healthy eating and lifestyle habits. So just like you talked about with 21 days or 10 days or sort of however long you can manage it realistically, you're gonna give your, set yourself up to kind of create new habits and new, new patterns of behavior, which is really important in order to stay consistent. Sure. Okay, so let's finally get to these organs of elimination. So as I said, we've got five organs of elimination. We've got the skin, which is actually the biggest organ of elimination. So interesting to note that everything that you put on your skin gets into your body. And in some cases, it's actually much faster than if you were to eat. So we're really concerned about um, eating organic, most of us. And we're really concerned about eating healthy foods that are not toxic and you know, no preservatives and all the junk. We want to eat clean, so to speak. But a lot of us don't necessarily know about or think about, because we don't really learn about it, what we put on our skin is actually equally important. So when we put something into our bodies, when we eat something, our digestive systems have evolved over thousands and millions of years in order to know like how to kind of deal with it. So if you're going to eat something that's toxic, your body kind of goes, oh, that's toxic. I'm going to like hide that away in a fat cell or I'm going to get that out of the body as soon as possible. What happens though is when we were evolving, you know, it takes thousands and thousands and thousands of years for us to have evolutionary changes in our genes. But our, you know, we didn't have toxic, you know, man-made Johnson and Johnson products, you know, back thousands of years ago. So we never evolved mechanisms to actually protect from those chemicals on our skin. So when we're adding toxic chemicals to our skin, that's going right into our bloodstream really, really quickly. There's no, like in our tummies, there's hydrochloric acid and there's enzymes and there's all these types of things that are responsible for preventing that from getting into our system. But if we're putting our things 
into our skin, it's actually getting it right away. So we really need to be cognizant of that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Of course, the colon. So the colon is where the waste leaves the body. What we don't want is the waste sitting in the colon for too long. We wanna have that nice optimal transit time. Digestion's moving well, things are moving well. You know, you're having your daily bowel movements and things are, are going well. So it's really important to eat lots of fiber, drink lots of water, and to make sure that the environment in your gut is really healthy. So we'll talk about probiotics at the end. Um, and there's definitely lots of things I can do a whole talk about digestion, but it's really important to support the colon as well, make sure things are moving properly. Kidneys, so kidneys are really responsible for fluid balance. We wanna drink lots of water and horse tail tea is actually really you know flushing for the kidneys. So that can be really beneficial to help cleanse the kidneys. Um, and then the lymph. So the lymph isn't something we really talk about. I think the only time that, before I went to nutrition school, the only time I knew about lymph was like, if the doctor was like feeling my um, lymph throat, right? Yeah, lymph nodes, that's where we know we have them. But we don't really like, a kind of was like, what are lymph nodes? What, what do they do? Um, so I figure you guys might have the same question. So lymph, lymph system is actually a system in our body that collects debris and kind of the, the junk in our system and helps us to actually detox it. It's like a secondary detoxing system. And under our armpits and in our groin, um, in our neck, um, we have, you know, behind our knees, we have sort of these areas where there's a, like a collection of lymph nodes. So the thing with the, the lymph system, kind of like the circulatory system, if you can imagine one of those body maps with all the veins and the arteries, except the lymph system doesn't have a pump. So there's no pump kind of moving all that stuff around. It just is kind of sitting there. And so what we need to do is actually help that lymph move so that that lymph can therefore get rid of the junk in the body. And so there's certain things we can do. So rebounding, like trampolining, is really, really good. Dry branches. <laughs> dry brushing. Dry brushing, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, dry brushing is so important. Um, so basically it's a dry rustle, natural rustle, um, brush, bristle brush, sorry, that you do uh, do motions in a very specific way. So you start at your ankles and your feet and you kind of start to, to rub your, your, your skin in a circular motion. You move up towards your heart. You do it on your arms, you do it on your tummy, and it just basically kind of creates an invigorating sensation in the body and it gets things moving under the skin. So that's really important. Things like inversion yoga poses, so like legs up the wall, um, and different types of you know, headstands and handstands are really, really good as well. Um, and also um, the liver. So of course we're gonna talk a lot about the liver, but first let's talk about what are the things that are burdening the liver? What are the things that are adding to that sort of strain on the liver? Because we wanna take those things away so that our liver can do its job. So we're kind of like giving a, giving a hand to our liver so it can do its job. So things like caffeine, alcohol, refined sugar, all the good stuff, uh, gluten, red meat, trans fats, so like um, bad fats, fats that aren't actually healthy, things from like fried foods or like pastries and cakes and things like that, um, MSG, pesticides and preservatives. So pesticides coming from foods that have been sprayed. So we really wanna make sure that we're washing those foods if we're not buying them organic um, and making sure that we're getting as much of that off as we possibly can. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about sort of more of the hands-on, what you can actually do, what are the supplements you should buy, what are the foods you should eat, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I'll get your question in one second. Um, so we're going to go through the food. So we'll be a little bit heavy on the food because that's the most important. We'll talk about the lifestyle habits, the skincare and the personal care. So what are some of the things you want to watch out for? Um, and then we'll talk about some of the supplements. Okay, so in terms of cleansing foods to eliminate, so these are the foods that you really want to focus on letting go of for you know anywhere between five and 21 days. And, and really like the longer the better, but whatever is realistic for you. So if a five day cleanse is something that's realistic, do that. If a 21 day cleanse is realistic, then do that but essentially all refined sugars. So any kind of added sugar, and if you guys would be so surprised, sugar is in everything. It's in everything that we like totally eat. So we really wanna focus on those real whole foods um, that just don't have any ingredients in them. They're just the food. And then when you do that, your likelihood of not ingesting additional sugars is, is you know, much higher. Sugar is a very, very inflammatory food. And actually all of these foods are you know, in, in, inflammatory. So, Inflammation is actually the root cause of all disease. So we really want to kind of get a hold of that inflammation and 
changing our diet is a huge way that we can do that. So dairy as well. So I'm not necessarily saying dairy is terrible or horrible or you know bad, but what I am saying is a lot of people find that when they cut out dairy, they feel a lot better. The bloating goes away, their skin clears up, their inflammation reduces. So cutting it out for a certain period of time can be really, really beneficial and allow that sort of gut to, to, to take a little bit of a break. Um, gluten, so gluten can be damaging to a lot of people. A lot of people are sensitive to it and they don't even realize it, but once they take it out, the blow goes down, same type of thing, the skin gets a little bit brighter, so they're feeling a little bit better. Um, coffee, so again, coffee's not inherently bad. There's lots of good arguments you can make for coffee. The problem comes when we are actually using coffee every day, several times a day, to actually use that as a source of energy. So we want to be, you know, getting our energy through rest and through, you know, a really healthy, phytonutrient-rich diet. We don't want to rely on coffee. So if you're at the point where you're getting a headache if you don't have coffee, that's a good indication to say maybe I should go off of coffee for a little while. And I always suggest that if you're going to do a detox or a spring cleanse that you try matcha tea. If going off caffeine isn't your jam and like you gotta work and you can't function without some sort of caffeine, which is the reality for a lot of us, trying a matcha green tea, which is basically the, the crushed up green tea leaf. It's very, very high in antioxidants and it's got um, an amino acid in it it's called L-theanine that isn't gonna get you as high. It's not gonna get you that, that high that coffee gives you, but it's still gonna keep you feeling alert and awake and a lot more calm. So you're gonna get a lot of benefits from it as well. So alcohol is very inflammatory and it's also harsh on the liver. Um, trans fats, so things like fried foods um, or things like um, pastries, baked goods, cookies, anything like that, you wanna stay away from. And then of course, genet genetically modified foods. So um, of course, if you're shopping downstairs, this isn't a concern, but preservatives, pesticides, and GMOs are things that we wanna stay away from. Okay, so cleansing uh, foods to enjoy. So cleansing doesn't necessarily need to be a bad time. You know, everyone thinks of detoxing as being like difficult and hard and kind of painful and, and in punishment in some ways. And in essence, it really doesn't need to be like that. We can eat lots of really, really tasty, really, really delicious foods. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be vegetarian. If you are a vegetarian, it could be could be vegan, or it could be, you know, include a little bit of fish and, and meat, clean source uh, fish and meat as well. So there's definitely a lot of foods that are very liver supporting and cleansing supportive. And these are just a list of some of the most supportive foods for the liver. So things like leafy greens of all types, um, colorful vegetables, so we get phytonutrients, we get all these really, really special nutrients from all of the different colored fruits and vegetables. We want to really include a diet that's really rich in lots of different colored fruits and vegetables. Things like garlic and onion, so they are very, very high in uh, something called sulfur, which is very supportive of the liver. Um, ginger and turmeric, so eating the actual raw ginger, raw turmeric powder is good too, but the raw is actually going to be, you know, the most pure form. So if we can get that into our smoothies or our cooking or you know any sort of way that we can get it in. Um, lemons are really, really great. We talked about the lemon water and things like beets. Beets are very detoxifying for the liver and very blood building. Beets. Beets, yep. Um, so you can have a balance of raw and cooked vegetables. You don't have to have everything raw, but raw is really good because we've still got the live enzymes in the food before we kind of cook them. Um, and then lean proteins, so things like eggs, if you're uh, not a vegetarian, things like chicken, like a grass, um, like an organic chicken, uh, wild fish, non-GMO soy, that's really, really important that the soy, the tempeh, um, or if you're doing tofu or anything like that, that it is from a non-GMO source because a lot of the soy that we eat is genetically modified, so that's really, really important. Um, adding essential oils. So we really want to make sure, and, and this kind of goes back to the first point, that just because you're doing a cleanse or a detox or you're taking a reset, some time to kind of, you know, really care for your body, we're not going to cut out any of the food groups. So we're still going to eat lots of carbohydrates, we're still going to eat lots of protein, we're still going to eat lots of good quality fats, um, and fiber as well. So we want to make sure that all of those things are included. So we're not going like on a carb-free diet or fat-free diet or anything like that. We're just eating plenty of real whole foods. And then these foods specifically are really good to support the liver. So of course, drinking plenty of water and herbal teas. 
And two that I recommend are the dandelion tea and the nettle tea. So those are really, really nourishing to the liver, nourishing to the blood. And the brand that I use and love is called Traditional Medicinals. And you've probably seen it um, you know, several times. It's really, really good quality tea. And you need, if you actually read the, the package of the Traditional Medicinals tea, it's gonna say steep for quite a long time. I think that most of them are like 10 minutes or something like that, which is more than we would normally steep, like just a regular cup of tea. So what you can do if you even wanna take that further is steep something overnight and use that as the base for your smoothie. So if anyone's doing like green smoothies or anything like that, and you're, you're using water or almond milk or something to, to make your smoothie, you can always just make a, a, a you know, mason jar of nettle tea and use that as your base. You don't taste it, it's quite strong, but once you start adding your fruit and all that kind of stuff in, it's very, very nourishing for the, for the liver and really nourishing for the blood and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is just kind of to summarize the dietary section. So we wanna eat whole foods. So the rule is, is it from a tree? Is it from the ground? Is it from the ocean? Is it from the land? Is it a real thing? What our grandparents recognize this as food? And you always want to sort of look at what you're eating in the least processed form. So what are the foods that are just actual foods? And those are the ones that we want to focus on. Foods that don't need an ingredient label or a nutritional facts panel. Um, eating organic. So we went through um, the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. This is where you can actually download this guide. If you, you type in this link, http colon double slash bit.ly 1p0ad7k. Um, if you want to email me after this, michelle at michellenutrition.ca, I can just send it to you. Um, and eat mindfully and enjoy. Like it's really important that kind of the body works holistically. So when we're actually eating these foods, we're eating them in a way where we're being mindful and you know very grateful for the food, um, and that actually influences digestion as well. Okay, so let's talk about now that we've kind of covered up on the food section. Let's just um, go through the next few slides before we wrap up. So lifestyle habits. What are the things that we can do that are going to support our body? At every single day. So it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, just during a detox or a reset or a cleanse, but what are the things that we can be doing all the time to kind of help support those channels of elimination that we talked about? So sweating, so of course exercise. Sweating actually allows toxins to be released through the skin. We, we know that. Um, sauna, so infrared saunas can be really, really great. So if you have access to an infrared sauna, doing a sauna and then immediately after taking a cold shower to rinse off whatever has kind of come up um, can be very detoxifying. Drinking water, so lots and lots of water. So the rule with water, there isn't really a rule with water. The rules, the kind of guidelines are, if you're thirsty, then you've, you know, you've kind of gone too far. You should actually not really let your body get thirsty. You should be drinking a constant supply of water so you don't get thirsty. But half of your body weight in pounds in ounces is kind of a good, a good rule of thumb. So if you're 100 pounds or 200 pounds, you would drink 100 ounces or 50 ounces of water. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a general guideline, but you really want to kind of tune into your own personal body because every day is going to be different. Some days you're going to be more active. Some days it's going to be drier out. You, you just got to kind of turn, tune in. I'm going to take questions at the end. Um, but that's a good guideline. So again, half your body weight in pounds and ounces. If you're 120 pounds, you're gonna drink 60 ounces of water, which is about eight glasses. Make sense? Um, so scheduling, relaxation, and rest, very, very important for detoxification. Doesn't seem to necessarily connect, but we need to sleep in order to allow our immune system and digestive system to replenish itself. So it's really, really critical. That's when the cells start to rebuild themselves. So making sure we're getting that adequate sleep and rest. Um, it's different for everyone. Uh, usually the guideline is for an adult seven hours, but it's so varied. I, you know, I've had clients that five hours is enough and then eight hours is enough. So it, you really just gotta tune into your own body. But I would say seven is a good guideline. Um, Epsom salts baths are very, very detoxifying. Uh, yoga can actually be really detoxifying, and this is an example of a detoxifying yoga pose. So twists, for anyone who does yoga, are very, very detoxifying. And inversion poses. So I talked a bit at the beginning about having your legs up the wall, 
or doing like headstands and handstands because you're changing the direction of the blood flow. So it's actually very detoxifying. Um, massage as well. Massage gets that lymph going, it moves things around. So having a massage and then drinking lots of water is also really important from a lifestyle perspective. Um, dry skin brushing. So we touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but getting yourself a high quality natural bristle brush and then learning the very specific technique. I actually have a blog post on my website that talks exactly talks you exactly through how to dry skin brush. Um, but you basically start at the ankles and you work your way up towards the heart in a circular motion. Um, and then emotional detoxing. So this isn't really something we talk about or think about, but we really want to focus on getting those negative toxic thoughts out of our head or those toxic relationships or those toxic people or your toxic employer or whoever it is. Um, and really find a way to, to bring positivity into your life and, and to move that outside of, of your realm. Okay, so this topic here is cleansing skin care. So this is one of my biggest passions and I, I teach a lot about it and I talk a lot about it on my blog and I, and I really am so passionate about teaching about skin care because I don't think that we really ever learn about skin care. You might hear about it in the media, like who heard about the Johnson & Johnson thing a couple, maybe a month or two ago, it was like a big, basically uh, there was a lawsuit, it was about the talcum powder, like the, the baby powder and stuff, um, it, it caused cancer, and so they were actually proving that it actually does cause cancer. Um, and they also have products, you know, baby products that have carcinogens in them, so there's like a lot of products out there, skin care, hair care, you know, makeup, um, and cleaning products as well, like personal care, but but, but cleaning as well. So all these products that we're using every single day um, that are allowed and regulated to be on the market but actually cause a lot of problems, like the, 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 the components of the products are toxic. So the regulations are very different than the food regulating body and they kind of let a lot of things through and they don't necessarily study the long-term effects or the effects of the chemicals and how they interrelate with other chemicals. So for example, the little microbeads in the toothpaste. Did anyone hear about that? Yeah. 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 yeah, so I mean, it's really toxic for the environment, but we're also looking at you know certain chemicals in things like toothpaste that they might be tested for safety, but they're tested for safety not over the use of 50 years three times a day or two times a day. So all those little increments are kind of adding to your toxic load. And so when you've got a lot of skincare, you're using a lot of you know makeup and personal care products, there's a lot of chemicals, um, you know, and cleaning as well that we don't really always think about. So it's really important to start, you know, it can be very overwhelming, but it's important to start to educate yourself about what are the things I want to stay away from? What kind of makeup do I want to use? You know, is perfume really good for me? Um, or, you know, is there a concern around thyroid? You know, if you're constantly spraying it on your neck. So there's, there's sort of this whole wealth of information and I'd love to come back and do kind of a whole separate talk about that because it's such an important topic and there's so many amazing natural organic skincare brands out there nowadays. You know, the industry is growing, but we do need to be mindful of it. And so we need to understand that our skin is our lar largest organ. So like I said before, anything we're putting on our skin is getting into our body. It's truly a reflection of our inner health. So again, as I said before, when something is appearing on our skin, that's a direct indication that something isn't right inside. Something is out of balance inside. What is that and what, what, what do we need to do about it? Um, so we really need to manage that toxic load. We need to think about the fact that a lot of these chemicals are causing free radical damage. So a lot of us are using like anti-wrinkle creams, but the um, the irony is is that a lot of those chemicals that we're putting on are actually causing, you know, uh, oxidizing our skin. So they're actually causing free radical damage. So we really want to use things like natural plant extracts, things like essential oils natural you know plant oils and natural like shea butters coconut oil all these types of things that are going to give you the same result they're just not going to basically make you toxic so um the other concern and this is a massive concern for both men and women is endocrine and hormone disruption so when we're taking in all of these chemicals it really messes with our hormones and anyone who's ever um you know, had a problem with the hormones knows that hormones can make you really, really crazy and they can really mess things up. 
So we really need to balance them. Um, and a lot of these chemicals act, they mimic hormones. So the actual molecular structure of them is very similar to estrogen, for example. And when we're using a lot of those chemicals, our body thinks it has extra estrogen, extra estrogen, and it acts that way. So we really need to be careful around what we're using. So what we can do, what this company, the same company or nonprofit that actually gave us this Dirty Dozen Clean 15 guide, this handy you know, research, has also come up with an app and a website called um, Skin Deep. And what you can do is you can download the app and it's www.ewg.org slash skin deep. You can download the app on your smartphone or you can go to the website and you can literally type in, you know, Pantene Pro-V or um, Colgate toothpaste or whatever you've got at home. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you a little rating and it's gonna say, you know, red, yellow, or green. It's gonna give you the number and it's gonna say like, this is not really that toxic based on the chemicals or this is super toxic based on the chemicals. So you just want to be mindful of that and it's a really easy cool thing to use so i suggest that be one of your your take homes and just do one or two products and see and then you know without getting overwhelmed maybe consider next time you go buy toothpaste maybe i should buy a toothpaste that is less toxic and, and start doing your research one product at a time instead of kind of throwing out your entire cabinet um okay so let's talk cleaning um so there's, I could have gone on about cleaning, but all I decided to do instead was to give you a, a natural at home cleaning recipe. And this is really an all purpose cleaner, so you can do your counter, you can do anything to kind of use a natural product in order to disinfect. So plant based essential oils, so something like a citrus oil, like orange or lemon are very, very, very powerful. And they can actually be antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. So using plant essential oils, if making your own cleaning is something that you are interested in, you can use this recipe. If not, there's plenty of amazing brands and I know that they carry them downstairs as well. So um, thinking about that. Okay, so this is our, this is our very last slide. Um, so I just want to talk for a second about supplements here. Okay, so supplements. So supplements are supplementary to a healthy diet. So the idea isn't that we just go out and purchase like a whole bunch of supplements and then that just kind of carries us through out of detox. We don't really want to think about it like that. We want to think about what does my body specifically need help with. Like it's, a, it's like, like a helper and it's kind of supporting our overall body. So we definitely want to think diet first and then supplements supplementary to a healthy diet. And so these are sort of a few of my favorite supplements that help to complement cleansing, but some of them are complementary to really all the time. Um, and if you notice, they're all Genuine Health, so the same um, brand that you guys might have seen downstairs when you, if you were here a little bit earlier, there was a, um, there, yeah, a table, thank you. <laughs> um, there was a table and someone demoing them, and these products are amazing. And actually, so full disclaimer, I actually used to work for Genuine Health, so I didn't tell you guys this, but I have a marketing background. So I worked for several years in marketing before I became a holistic nutritionist. And this was one of the companies that I worked at. And Genuine Health is such an amazing, amazing company. They take so much care into their formulas and their ingredient selection. And everything is organic, everything's non-GMO, everything's gluten-free. I see some of you guys shaking your heads. The products actually work. So I wouldn't recommend these products if I didn't wholeheartedly believe in them and use them myself. But let me give you a little bit of an explanation in terms of what they are and what they can help with. So the first is Genuine Health Greens Plus Daily Detox. So has anyone ever heard of Greens Plus? It's been around for ever. ever. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. So what it is is essentially a bunch of fruits and vegetables, um, dehydrated fruits and vegetables. It's like a greens powder, similar to the one that you mentioned earlier. You mix it with water, you drink it first thing in the morning, and it really just helps to kind of increase your, your, your fruit and vegetable intake for the day. It's kind of similar to eating a bunch of organic salads. That's kind of a simple way to think about it. Um, but with this one specifically, they've actually included a detoxifying blend. So there's additional fiber in here, so we all know we need fiber to help kind of move things along. It's got something called L-glutamine in it, which is really, really supportive for healing the gut lining. Um, and they, they actually also have probiotic built into here as well. So above and beyond sort of 
the regular green splits formula, they've gone ahead and added a very special detox formula on top of that that is very, very supporting of detox. So this one here is, um, this is a 10 day supply, I believe. So you, you can get them in different sizes, basically. You can use it forever, but it's very supporting for detoxing as well. Um, the next one is omega-3. So who's here taking an omega-3 or has heard about omega-3? That's the one I think. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's actually the one I think too. Um, so omega-3s are very anti-inflammatory. So omega is kind of one of those things that is good for everything. It's good for your heart, it's good for your eyes, it's good for your skin, it's good for reducing inflammation. So if you've got inflammation in the gut, it's good to bring that down. So it's kind of one of those supplements that I tend to recommend most people take um, regularly because most of us aren't eating, you know, a lot of omega-3 rich foods. That's just how our North American diet is. So things like salmon, flaxseed, uh, walnuts, olive oil, all of those types of things, really, really great. But we do need to include a lot to really get that full benefit. So omegas are a great, great option for that. The third thing is the uh, vegan protein. So for those of us who have trouble meeting our protein needs, or you know, as we know, protein is so important to keep us full. It keeps our metabolism going very strong. It's a thermogenic food that so really helps with things like weight loss, managing cravings, um, and just protein is important for so many things. It, it's, it's responsible for rebuilding our our bodies. So things like our hair, our skin, our nails, rebuilding um, our immune system. Protein has this huge, huge role in our body. So making sure that you're getting good, clean, high quality protein is, is also good as well. So I love to add this to my smoothie um, every morning when I have a smoothie, it keeps me full for a really long time. This one is great because it's fermented. So I've just heard about fermented foods and like why they're good, yeah. Kimchi. Yeah, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso tempeh, um, what else, kombucha, those are just a few. This is kind of like the same thing. They've gone through a, a fermentation process and so they basically made all the nutrients that are really, really easy to absorb. So it's very, very bioavailable. Um, and it also doesn't give that kind of bloaty feeling. So a lot of people have tried vegan protein powders in the past and they get like a bloaty discomfort afterwards. That isn't the case with, with this stuff. So this stuff's great. You can get it unflavored, chocolate or vanilla. So depending on whatever is in your smoothie. And then they also have bars. So when you don't have time to you know, eat a full meal or you need a snack, Throwing one in your purse, I'll help you your question at the end. It's just a really good, um, really great option. It's a really you know clean source of protein. Um, and then they've got another product down here. I don't have a sample available, but it's called Whole Body. So it's very similar. It's sort of taking the greens plus blend and adding a fermented blend. So you definitely um, want to include that fermentation in your diet. And what, what it's going to actually do, which is actually really important for you guys to know, is give you more energy, help with digestion, basically clear your skin. It's all the things that eating, if you ate a bunch of fruits and vegetables, it's all the things that it would, it would do like the same thing. So it's going to help with digestion, it's going to help with antioxidants, all of that kind of stuff. And then the last thing that I recommend sort of ongoing from pretty much all of my clients is a good quality probiotic. So something that's going to feed those little bugs in your gut and crowd out the bad guys and keep that good, healthy population of microflora in your gut happening. So, you know, everyone's different and kind of has different needs, um, but sort of a maintenance dosage, eating all those fermented foods that we talked about, but also taking a really, really good, high quality probiotic that's going to continually help to support the digestive system. I don't know which one's good. It's so many that you try them, like they don't do it. Yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, you want to make sure, there's different strains, it's a good question, and, and the answer is kind of, the long answer is, there's different for everyone. The short answer is, you really want to make sure that you're you're having a, a strain that is beneficial for whatever you're using it for. So some people have, you know, gastrointestinal, you know, problems. Some people have, you know, other types of problems that they need to target. So using a, a proven strain is really important, like, um, because, May, may I comment yeah, Genestra is a great, great brand. So I, I always, I actually recommend Genestra all the time. I use Genestra myself. How do you know which one is going to be important to the things and nothing is worse? Well, a lot of them, so if nothing's working, then I would look at maybe some of the underlying factors. Because digestive uh, probiotics have such a wide impact. So it depends kind of what 
what you're looking to do. Um, but it's just good to take as a maintenance dosage just all the time. So I would just talk I to your nutri nutri nutritionist and uh, or a naturopathic doctor or even somebody downstairs who's qualified to help and try and help you figure out which one. Because there are a lot of really great ones on the market, um, but it could be something else. And I think that having a dosage that's high enough is really important. So a lot of times probiotics <laughs> won't have enough of the good bugs in it to actually make an impact. So that's really important. Okay, sort of high dosage. Yeah, and again, it's, it's really hard to answer sort of general questions because every person has a different need. And so some people might need to start out with a specific strain, you know, with a very different amount of active cultures, whereas someone else, you know, their digestive health might be really good and they can just kind of do a little bit more of a, a maintenance dosage. So it's very, very uh, unique and, and individual specific. I mean, vitamin C is amazing. We should be eating it every day and, it, you know, it's an antioxidant, so it's got a lot, kind of a wide range of beneficial effects. Um, selenium, same thing. Brazil nuts are a really great source. What do you love powder? Uh, yeah, that, that would be great as well. I mean, it's an antioxidant, so it's going to have plenty of benefits. So kind of one of those things. Acidophilus. Yeah. yeah, that's actually a strain, yep. So, yeah, so we are actually pretty much out of time. So what I want to do now is if I